we're starting a new unit um, of sequences and series, and particularly what we're going to look at today is arithmetic sequences. And um, first of all, up here it says, suppose that n is a natural number. And then we have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, dot, 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 a sub n. All that that is, is it's a list of n terms. We don't know how many terms we have, but we have a list of them. And if we add those terms in the list together, that is called a series of n terms. And we're not going to do this today. We'll do this part tomorrow, but the value of the sum and it's capital S and then sub N. It's a subscript. What this is called is it's called the sum of the series. That's how we can abbreviate a whole bunch of terms added together. But what I haven't talked about yet is what is a sequence. And I, I have in a roundabout way, but not in, the, in a good enough way. A sequence is an ordered list. Of terms. A sequence is an ordered list of, of numbers or of terms. series adds those terms together. It adds the terms. But again, in particular today, we are going to look at just the sequence. We're going to be looking at a list of terms. And as we jump down to the left hand side of our paper here, here's the actual definition of, our, of an arithmetic sequence. It's an ordered list of numbers in which the difference between each number and the one before it is constant. So if we take a look at a couple of examples here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is an arithmetic sequence. We have the difference between each of them. The difference between 2 and 4 is 2. The difference between 4 and 6 is 2. The difference between 6 and 8 is 2. The difference between 8 and 10 is 2. And they don't have to be all positive numbers. We could have something like negative 21, negative 18, negative 15, negative 12. And the difference between these numbers, between negative 21 and negative 18, is 3. Between negative 18 and negative 15 is 3. And between negative 15 and negative 12 is 3. A non-example here is something like 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And it is a sequence, but it has a different pattern to it. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. This is not an arithmetic sequence. But what happens when we're working with these arithmetic sequences, first of all? They're expressed as a list, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, dot, 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 to a sub n. Each value in the sequence is called a term. The difference between consecutive terms. The difference between each of the terms in the sequence is called a common difference.
and we abbreviate that as D. <coughs> a sub n, the number three, a sub n, is called the nth term. And it can be found by using that formula below here, which is really what we're going to specifically concentrate with today. We're going to work with this one over and over and over again. So you may want to highlight that, but just like our last unit, we didn't make you memorize the formulas. We provided them for you. We will still provide the formulas for you. We just won't give you what a sub n is, and a sub 1 is, and n, and d. Let's flip the page here. Um, instead of doing that one there, it's right here again. And um, what you might want to do at the very top of your paper is write down that formula so you're familiar with it. And it is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's the formula that we're going to be using. So, given the sequence, 1, 5, 9, 13, what is the common difference? Well, to figure out the common difference, what we do is we take 5 minus 1. Well, 5 minus 1 equals 4. And then we can take 9 minus 5, and it equals 4. We can take 13 minus 9, and it equals 4. And consequently, what we end up with here is that our common difference, I hope you can squeeze it in better than I, our common difference it is 4, not 5. <laughs> common difference is 4. Notice what I did. 5 minus 1, the second term minus the first term. The third term minus the second one, 9 minus 5. The fourth term minus the third term. To get that value of 4, they need to be the same for us to have an arithmetic sequence. Part B, it says write an equation for the nth term of the sequence. So that's where we start to use our formula there that we were given on the front page. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill in what we know. Well, it says a sub n. We don't know that. And then it equals a sub 1. What's our first term in this list? 1. It's going to be 1 plus, we don't know n, but we just figured out what the common difference was, and the common difference is 4. Well, now that we know that, we want to simplify this equation a little bit more. And we're going to do that by using the distributive property. So we're going to get 1 plus 4n minus 4. And then when we combine like terms, we've got 1 minus 4. We get a sub n equals negative 3 plus 4n. That's an equation for our nth term of the sequence. And once we come up with that value, which I should have just written here in this space here, negative 3 plus 4n, the question now says, well, what is the 11th term? Well, that means that we're going to put 11 in for n. So it's going to be a sub 11 equals negative 3 plus 4 times 11. And you can type that into your calculator here. But we end up with negative 3 plus 44, which is 41. 
our 11th term in this sequence that starts with 1, 5, 9, 13. If we kept going, eventually when we get to the 11th value, we're going to find that it's 41. Now that's the first example that you've seen. Hopefully it makes sense, but we're going to practice with a lot of them. So if it doesn't make sense yet, hopefully it will as we progress. Problem two, find the hundredth term of this arithmetic sequence. So hopefully you can still see your formula up there, but let's look and see what we know. So we got our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And um, our first term. What's our first term in the sequence? First term is 5. And then Um, what's our common difference in this sequence? 8 minus 5 is 3. 11 minus 8 is 3. 14 minus 11 is 3. 17 minus 14 is 3. So, um, our common difference is 3. And now it says find the hundredth term. That means that n is a hundred. And once we can identify this information, we can put it back into our equation here. So this is going to be a sub 100 is what we're finding. The hundredth term is 5 plus 100 minus 1 times d. Again, this is something that you could type into your calculator if you wanted to. 100 minus 1 is 99 times 3. And then we get 5 plus, well, 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 3 is 27. 28, 29. So 5 plus 297 is 302. So our hundredth term in here, and we certainly want to, wouldn't want to do that by hand. But when we got there, at the hundredth, if we wrote down all of these values, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, 29, and so forth, when we got to the hundredth one, we should come up with 302. This formula gives us a way to calculate that number. Hopefully looking a little bit more comfortable or feeling a little bit more comfortable with this. On problem number three, given an arithmetic sequence with a sub 1 is 3, a sub 5 is 19, and a sub n equals 163, this time what we want to figure out is what does n equal? So we know um, actually, eventually, we want to use this formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We know some information about this problem. We know that a sub 1 is 3. But we still, we don't know what n is. We're going to try to find n. That's what the question says. What we need to know is what's the common difference. We should be able to figure that out. And finally, we know that a sub n is 63. 163. There's the information that we know. So what I found a little bit helpful here on this problem is to find our common difference is I wrote out a little bit of this list. Our first term was 3. And we don't know what the second term is. 
We don't know what the third term is. We don't know what the fourth term is. But we do know that the fifth term is 19. And what we can do with this information is we can use those values that we have to find this middle term. And then we can use it again, hopefully, to find the rest of it. So how do we do that? Well, if we take the first term and the fifth term, and we find the average of those terms, so if we take the first term and the fifth term, 3 plus 19 is 22 divided by 2, we get 11. That's what that value is right there. Now, we might be able to, at this point, figure out what the common difference is from that information. But if we can't, then what we can do is the same kind of thing. We can take 3 plus 11, and we can divide by 2. So 3 plus 11 is 14 divided by 2 which is 7. And I know we don't know that fourth term yet, but I bet we could figure it out. But ultimately what we're really trying to figure out is what's the common difference? 7 minus 3 gives us 4. 11 minus 7 still gives us 4. Really, if we wanted to figure out this other term here, we could do the 11 plus the 19 divided by 2, which is 30 divided by 2, which is 15. 15 minus 11 is 4. 19 minus 15 is 4. What we figure out, then, is that our common difference is 4. And now we can use our information to come up with the rest. So we fill it in. A sub 1 is 3. We don't know n. We know our common difference is 4. And the last piece of information that I have over there in our list is that A sub n equals 163. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the distributive property to help us solve. I'm going to take this 4 times that 4 times 1. If we combine like terms over here on the right side of the equation, we've got 3 minus 4, which is negative 1 plus 4n equals 163. Well, to solve, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And we get 164 equals 4n. And finally, 4 times n, the inverse operation is to divide by 4. And we end up with 41. Our 41st term in this problem is 163. And in some regards, I wish I would have put problem number 4 before problem number 3. Because here we see this kind of thing that we just had to do back in problem number 3 to help us solve. But at least we've seen it now. And what we have to do is we can take 1 plus 9 and we can divide by 2. And that's going to give us our value here. And when it's very simple like that, and again, simple is a bad word to use in math because sometimes no matter what in math, it's never going to be simple. But we could use my method that we just used a couple minutes ago on problem number three. But let's 
create a formula to solve this. And what we know in this particular problem is that um, the formula that we're going to use to figure it out is the a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. But what we know is we know that a sub 1 is negative 13. And then that's the first, and then we have second, and the third, and the fourth. a sub 5 is negative 3. We don't know what our common difference is, but because we know a sub 5, that means that n equals 5. And we can come up with our formula so that we can figure out our missing terms in our problem. So a sub n here is going to be negative 3, because we're going to make it a sub 5 equals a sub 1, which is negative 13, plus n, which is 5 minus 1 times c. We don't know what the common difference is, but once we figure out what the common difference is, then we can fill in our missing terms. So this is negative 3 equals negative 13 plus 4d. We can add 13 to both sides. And we end up with 10 equals 4d. And then we can divide both sides by 4. And 10 divided by 4 is the same thing as 2.5, which might be a little bit better of a number for you than a fraction. But ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what do we need to put back into our equation here so that we can fill in these three spaces. Well, what we're going to do, and we might even use our calculator, is we can take negative 13 plus 2.5. And we get negative 10.5. And then we've got negative 10.5 plus 2.5, which is negative 8. And then we take neg uh, yeah, negative 8 plus 2.5, and we get negative 5.5. that makes sense here if we take negative 5.5 negative 5.5 plus 2.5 negative 3 that makes sense as we flip our page again you may want to write at the top of your page a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. There is our formula that we're going to use throughout. And it says find the term position n for the value of 87 in the arithmetic sequence of negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, all the way up to 87. So, what we don't know, we don't know what n equals, but what we do know is that a sub n is 87. What's our first value in this sequence? Anybody? Probably? Negative 5. Common difference. What's the common difference in here? And the thing is, if you're not sure, use a calculator. We can take negative 3 minus 
negative 5. Does difference mean subtraction? Or we can take negative 1 minus negative 3. But both times there, what we see is that our common difference is 2. And we're going to put those values back into our equation now. A sub x is 87. A sub 1 is negative 5. We don't know what n is, but we know that our common difference is a 2. We're going to use distributed property. So we're going to get 87 equals negative 5 plus 2 times n, 2 times 1. Combine my terms over here on the right side of the equation. 87 equals negative 7 plus 2n. And we want to solve this equation. So what are we going to do with that negative 7? Add it to both sides. So notice we're adding here, which means we're going to get 94 equals 2n. So it's 2 times n. Our inverse operation is to divide by 2. And I think it's 47. Once again, what this means is, is that our 47th term is going to be 87. That's going to be our value. So we're going to have to figure out a bunch of terms before that. So it's nice that we have a formula to be able to do that. And again, the process is still the same. We are just practicing over and over and over again how to use this formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times d. And we have to look and see what information is given to us. On problem number six, it says that the first term in here is negative eight. The ninth term is 32. And since we have a sub nine, that means that n is 9. And this time what we have to find is we have to find the common difference. We don't know what the common difference is, but we have enough information to use our formula to help us. So we're going to fill it in. 32 equals negative 8 plus 9 minus 1 times d. Lots of practice with solving equations. If we combine in our parentheses here, we get negative 8 plus 9 minus 1 is 8d. And then we're going to get our negative 8 over to the other side, just like we did in the previous example. We add 8 to both sides, and we get 40 equals 8d. So when we divide both sides by 8, we're going to figure out what our common difference is. And our common difference is 5. Number 7. In the first year, the tuition at a local college is $4,000. If the tuition increases by $600 per year, how much will tuition be in the 10th year? So once again, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. 
what's the four thousand? The four thousand dollars in this problem. Probably. It's ace of one. Or ace of one. It's four thousand. What's the six hundred? Is it N or is it D? It's actually D. Good try. And then what we want to know is how much will the tuition be in the 10th year? There's our N. And we can fill it in. So A sub 1 is 4,000. Plus 10 times 1 times 600. 4,000 plus 9 times 600. Well, 4,000. By the way, you could have typed that in your calculator earlier. But 4,000 plus 5,400. 9400. Harold is starting a new workout program in which each day he will complete four more push ups than the day before. If he starts with five push ups on the first day, how many push ups will he do on the 12th day? Well, let's Remember that our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And what we've got is on the first day, he's going to do, um, let's see, if he starts with five push ups on the first day, there we go. And then in his program, each day he's going to do four more push ups than the day before. That means that his common difference is four. And what we want to know is how many push ups will he do on the 12th day? Well, the 12th day is going to be our n. And then we can put this back into our formula here, and we get 5 plus 12 minus 1 times 4. So we get 5. 12 minus 1 is 11 times 4. And by the way, you can type in that first orange line to get your answer here. We get 5 plus 44. And this means that on the 12th day, Jared's going to be able to do 49 push-ups. Max is training for a marathon. The first week of training, Max runs 16 miles, and each week he runs two more miles than the previous week. And how many miles will Max run on the 16th week of training? Again, same formula. A sub n equals A sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. The first week of training, well, the first week of training, he runs 15 miles. Each week he runs two more miles. The common difference is two. We want to know how many miles will we run on the 16th, 16th week of training. Well, that means n is 16. So very, very similar to many of the problems that we've done today. When we go back and fill this in, 15 plus 16 minus 1 times 2. Again, at this point, you can type it in your calculator. We get 15 plus 15 times 2. 16 minus 1 is 15. 15 plus 30 is 45.